Hi everyone, how you doing? Welcome back to another Wi-Fi Sheep tech video. I uh, really wasn't planning on making this video. I'll just give you some context. It's now about 20 past midnight. Um, probably shouldn't be trying to do anything remotely technical at this hour. I haven't come on my is that fourth cup of tea. I don't drink coffee, so it's, uh, it is an English stereotype about Englishmen drinking tea, but literally I'm on my uh, fourth mug just for the caffeine so I can keep going. Right, what's happening? Um, if you saw the last video on the video NU Valet uh, card, uh, you saw me install it in issue three machine, uh, BBC Micro Model B issue three, which is what this is. To be honest with you, although it worked and I was able to run enough to show you some tech stuff, um, other stuff didn't work at all. Uh, you may have seen in the video, it, you, it gave you um, multiple uh, disk images with example software and you, you're meant to be able to bring up like full color photographs and all sorts um, on the screen. This was having none of it. It just kept throwing funny errors or odd screen modes. It just wouldn't do it. And I've managed to sort of get around that to make the video. Um, but I've got to come clean now. It didn't work in all honesty. Uh, I don't think it's the software. I don't think it's the board. I got a sneaking suspicion it's a RAM fault with the Model B itself. The RAM chips are here. Um, the similar in you got 16k soldered, 16k socketed. Uh, you got lower and upper and lower bank RAM. It could just be one of those chips is faulty. And um, this machine is now what 30? I'm going to say 35 years old. Probably manufactured about 1982. Um, it is an early one. So, yeah, it's a problem. Uh, right, just to add an insult to injury, the uh, camera, as I normally use, the battery's just gone flat. Um, I, so I'm now on the phone. Um, so this will probably now run out of memory or something because it's not a very big capacity uh, iPhone. Anyway, right, let's be quick about this. So this machine, basically, uh, I put back to how it was. Um, I'm going to try and not get my finger on the lens. I do apologise for that. Um, so I put the old ULA and heatsink back in. If we just turn the machine on, helps actually plug the damn thing in. There we go. Right. So that's now working. See, the thing is, you'd think it's fine, but it's it's not. It, it's got some problem. But it is registering full 32k. But yeah. So um, I've recovered the EEPROM. I've taken the uh, N NULA chip out and I've also taken the MMC chip although the MMC card this is what this ribbon is for is the, the actual device is still permanently attached more or less to this machine I have a spare that I can fit to another micro to uh, use in its place so this works I'm just going to put it back together so I need to just put the keyboard back on uh, and I need to try and source a replacement okay so I tweeted this one uh, a little earlier tonight on uh, Twitter um, this is the uh, sort of storage shelves, which are all due to be moved soon. But these are the storage shelves for my computer stuff and a lot of projects for Wi-Fi Sheep, uh, or sort of planned projects for the future. Uh, and I have one shelf over here, which is the BBC Micro shelf. I'm sure everyone has one of these. Yeah, maybe not. Um, yeah, I've sort of been hoarding them, um, admittedly. Uh, these are machines I have on my own personal computers, computers I've been given and are, are waiting uh, to be featured in Wi-Fi Sheep content or have been featured in Wi-Fi Sheep content and now need to be disposed of. Or when I mean disposed of, I mean put on eBay or whatever to be sold off to other collectors, retro game enthusiasts or anyone who's generally interested. So we'll be thinning this collection down. Um, now, unfortunately, as of all these machines, uh, very few of them actually work at the moment. The Master 128... Um, which I did my co-pro video is this one here. This one does work and it is the machine I want to put the ULA new NULA um, card in. Unfortunately you have to desolder the chip, the old ULA chip in that one and it's a 40 pin chip and I'm not doing that at the moment. Uh, the BBC Model B's most of them have a chip holder. You can just pop the um, chip out like you saw in the previous video. So these are the Model B's here. Again unfortunately None of these actually work at the moment. One of them is just a scrap machine. Uh, the other is a waiting restoration, has no power transformer. This one here 
basically was working was my second model b uh, and then just completely failed so i think what we're going to have to do is see if we can get that fixed um and then installed i think we need into it ready for this weekend so i'll just get that out and uh yeah i'll take it from there okay so i've got the machine out set up so yeah this one which is an issue free is actually a, a nicer um nice condition unit than uh, the other one but unfortunately i'll just take the lid off i've unscrewed the lid just to make it easier unfortunately it failed completely completely dead wouldn't power up and the reason is that you see from the power transformer here you have this cable that runs out and then connects and it's basically five volts and it taps five volts at various places onto the board and what's happened is that um, just over time the actual connections have corroded let me show you that and they've snapped off from their mountings it's also snapped here so basically it's just broke the circuit so the board wasn't getting powered up correctly um, so what I've got to try and do is to very very carefully see if I can tack these back on which is potentially a real problem actually uh, it just seems to be corrosion uh, of a bit of old flux or something it's just uh, corroding so um, I'm going to see if we can make a bit of a temporary repair on this board uh, just soon get this machine back up and running um, there's its heat sink for the uh, ULA chip which we'll have to uh, take that out um, yeah try not to get my fingers on the screen okay so I've just taken the keyboard off so we can see the full um, PCB in the machine uh, down here you can see we have got a full bank of ROMs so these are actually labeled properly so OS basic that one is floppy wise which is some utility software that one is dfs which is the um, disk filing system and the one on the end is amx which is for uh, mouse control um, you can actually plug a mouse into a bbc micro so we're going to have to take these two out because we need the rom space um yeah i'm just i'm looking at these the damage what i have got Fine. There we go. Well, so I have a, a glass fiber brush, um, so I can use that to try and clean up the contact. And show you try and clean up the contact area, and then I'll get a bit of flux and solder in there. To see if we can repair. Unfortunately, because I'm on the phone, I can't mount the phone on anything to show you, and I can't solder one-handed. So I'm just going to clean this up, and I'll uh, if it's successful or not. Okay, um, got half an hour later, uh, we're now back in, a little bit wonky, that one's back in. These two both here failed and were an absolute pain. Try and get that to focus, there we go. Absolute pain to get those in. Um, and of course you've got this wiring loom all in the way, so uh, yeah, not great. Okay, so I've just temporarily reattached the keyboard, put the ribbon lead back in, speakers back in. Uh, reason being, BBC Micros, they don't like to boot without their keyboards attached. You don't get any audio or anything if you don't put the keyboard on. So uh, it's plugged in. So moment of truth, will it boot? No. Damn. Why has that now failed? Ah, there we go. I'm a little worried about the joint there, but um, as you can see on the screen, we've now booted. Now, so this one has a lot of additional system software on board. I need to take those ROMs out because uh, we now need to uh, replace with the parts here. So, uh, yes, let's power down and we'll just do that now. Okay, so we're now at like one o'clock in the morning. Uh, the new EEPROMs are in. I just want to show you that before I put the keyboard on. Um, and then we'll see if this uh, this works. Okay, so the installation of the board is now in. A little bit of trouble. That didn't want to go in that well, but it is now connected up correctly. Uh, I put the Turbo MMC ROM in. You saw that earlier. I now have here, this is the spare MMC that's not actually attached to anything. So I'm going to swap the MMC SD card thingy out with the other one. It has all the software on it. And this ribbon just plugs into the user port on the BBC Micro underneath. So we'll just do that now and then we'll boot the machine up and it should read the MMC card. 
Okay, bit of an interesting one there. Um, didn't want to read the MMC card, so I had to swap the chips around. So uh, put the floppy filer in before. Um, luckily, look at the screen now. You can see it's all registering. It's all there. So hopefully now this will work. Um, just put the keyboard back over a little bit. So we now go see if we uh, see if we can talk to the card. Din two. The software started at two sixty. Okay, it's so um getting up to like two in the morning, so I probably need to wrap this video up really. Uh machine is running, um, but still generating a lot of faults. It seems to be a little bit better, but I don't know what it is. Are both these machines bad? I mean it's possible. Or is there actually a bug in the software? Um I, I'm beginning to think that I'm only gonna find out by getting this video card fitted to a BBC Master. Uh, maybe it's just the fact that it needs more memory, or I, God knows. Um, probably need to. Mm, I, I'm just thinking out loud now, which isn't helpful. Um, yeah, might need to try and transfer some files to disk, uh, so we're not using the um, MMC card there. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, keep calm, carry on. Uh, thanks so much for watching the video. Really got to a conclusion, but at least we've fixed another Model B, so that's now up and running. Um, although I might... Where is it? That red one there. Just try and... There we go. That red cable there is a bit loose still, despite the fact I've soldered it, but it's a bit like... Mm. So, um, yeah, I think we might try and... Uh, uh, see if we can't fix that a little bit. But anyway, there we go. So I'll, um, I think I'm going to sign off and say good night. So thanks so much for watching your video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you real soon right here on the Wi-Fi Sheep channel. Bye for now.